Yes. Not that anyone would want to, but if they did, yeah. they'd do it in that way, yeah. not in the other in way. That way. Now, is there anyone uh, whom you've uh, you've modelled, you know, your style on? I, I notice you've, you're really interested in, say, Errol Garner. Mm. Uh, Errol managed to cram a lot of notes and uh, and augment uh, chords. He yes. was always always changing the base the base of a song and mm. making it more interesting. Uh, so too with Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, no one can get more notes into a bar than Dizzy. No. Uh, do you find that are these a couple of personages that you might have modelled yourself on? They're actually great inspirations of mine. Yes, you've you've really hit the nail on the head yeah. there. And I, I think the lot of notes thing is something. Perhaps if I might say yes. at this stage that any criticisms that are made of me, not that there's many, but no. when they are, it's usually something. Well, not usually there's not enough. But yeah. if anyone made a criticism, it would be that perhaps that I do play a lot of notes. Uh, yes. I tend to like yeah. to play fairly loud and high. And but they're clowns. They don't know what they're talking about, yeah. James. You know, it's the age Absolutely. cricket, isn't it, in Melbourne, and the advertiser cricket in Adelaide. Yeah. They've been on and on at you for years. <laughs> and, of course, they just don't know what's happening in jazz. They don't know what's happening in music. Well, they don't realise that Tommy Tico well, is a clown. <laughs> they don't realise that I wasn't, Robert Sankster, I wasn't, uh, Johnny Sankster, Robert Sankster no, couldn't get no, a bloody note out no, of the horn um, if they tried. If what you I was did it for them. trying to say was that perhaps it's it's not it's just a matter of taste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But do you find yes. yourself you know listening to some people and just giggling, just thinking, God, this is bad. Sometimes, yes, yeah. yes, that that hack that can happen. Yeah. Roy, now, can you set up yes, the yes, uh, lecture demonstration? Were, yes, works. when you were writing, I, I noticed you did uh, uh, work with Ken Doan. Where yes, Ken, yes. no stranger to this program, I should say. Oh, where good. Ken did some work, sent it to you. You like Ken's and, work, do you? I love it. Great. And uh, and you looked at it and responded with music. Yes. Well, I, th I thought we might set up something, <coughs> uh, maybe, you know, in a couple of minutes' time. What we'll do, I've got three fabulous bits oh, of work Oh, you mean spontaneously? Here. Yes, these are photographs I've taken recently. And uh, what I'll do is, uh, is uh, uh, let you see the photographs. I see. And I'll get you to respond to them with the trumpet. And just before we get to that, if we could talk about the trumpet for a little bit, you use a very small mouthpiece, James. Why is that? Do you, do you find that the small mouthpiece um, piece helps with your embrasure? Well, yes, it's well, it's not that small, but yeah, well, I didn't think it was. I mean, have you seen? Well, maybe I'm thinking of trombone mouthpiece. Yes, yeah, so trombones much, much better. Are, are bigger. Yes. Yeah. Now, this is this is a fairly standard trumpet uh, trumpet mouthpiece, and yes. I um, yes. I uh, find that it's um, it's about the right size for my uh, for your lips. 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 Yeah. Yes. Do your lips get sore? I mean, I, re I read somewhere where you, sometimes you play for six hours on the go. Yes. No, your lips don't get sore. You do most of the work with your air. If you've really got good air. Yeah control and everything your lips don't have to work too hard it's yeah it's a bit of a, a misapprehension that people think you play the trumpet with your lips yeah. well yeah. enough of the talk yeah, Roy. Right. Uh, let's have a go with the trumpet yeah. okay. the uh, hidden camera the Roy, okay. the Roy camera remember these are shots Roy took over the last fortnight well right. okay James have a look at the monitor there and you might right. be able oh, to so I can over you, there yes. yes if you want to just let the trumpet do the talk do the talking okay okay All good right. luck That's brilliant. Oh, Absolutely. Holy dooly. When, when you do this in Asia you next really time, know your jazz. on, on your, yeah. your Bangkok tour, they'll be knocked out by this, I can assure you. And believe you me, that is age, boffins, those know-it-alls down there on the advertiser in Adelaide will lay down and let you walk all over them, having heard you do this. James Morrison, thanks very much for walking a mile with us. So take us up to the break, James. Can we have some more of that fat, horny trumpet action? McMahon, actor. Julian McMahon, star. Julian McMahon, husband. <sighs> Julian McMahon, toilet. You've made a nice cup of tea and you're sipping it in peace with Roy and HG.
The Players Theatre presents The World of Ian, with Paul Cyrilin as Ian, Lisa Forrest as Susan, Cole Joy as Ian's dad, Greg Matthews as Ian's friend Cole, Annette Shunwar as Susan's friend Deirdre, and Ted Mulry as Bob the Neighbour. I'm glad you lobbed in, Cole. Why, what's happening, Pop? Well, you know my lad, Ian, sure. as well as anyone. Sure. Yeah. Would you say that he's completely normal? <laughs> yeah, Ian's always struck me as, as straight, Pop. Yeah. Well, I'm concerned. I've done my best with him with the odd joke about Gina Lola Bridget and the busload of tourists and all that sort of thing, you know, <laughs> four on the floor and fats all around and stuff. <laughs> well, no, he seems to lack the essential connection between his head and his pants. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know, mate. Uh, I reckon Suze will sort out the fly department. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Hello. Come in, love. I just made a cuppa. Hello, Carl. Hello, Carl. Hi. Mm. Where's Bob? Here I am. What's running? <laughs> yeah. Deirdre's got something for you, Bob. It's not much, Bob. Just some green prawns and some kanja for cut from the rocks this morning. Deirdre, this is too much. How did you know I usually use greenies and kanji? She must be psychic, Bob. <laughs> well, I just love pulling things in, Bob. <laughs> really? <laughs> How would you like an afternoon on the boat? I've got a spare rod you just might like. Bob, I'd love that. I'll come. I don't think that's a good idea, Cole. Hey, Dad, have you seen my red undies? Oh, hi, Deirdre. Where's this? Out in the car. I think she's upset. Oh, what about? I'll go and find out, son. Come on, Deirdre, let's hit the fish. Well, I think I'll go and have a bit of a look for Sus. Come on, Cole. Mm -hmm. Stay here, Cole. You go alone, son. And do the right thing. Hello, everyone. Shelley Taylor-Smith here, and I bought a Julian McMahon. I'm not saying it changed my life, but I have so many visitors now, I can't believe it. And they all want to use the bathroom as soon as they lob in. They never admit it, but I bet it's the Julian. Australians, you've sat in the bleachers for long enough. And now it's time to strap on the boots and blow your trumpets. Roy, you know there's something I love doing in Perth, and that is spending a day at the cricket watching fit. Young Australians, built in the living daylights out of any of your touring sides you like to name, your Packies, your West Indians, yeah. your Poms, your, you know, South Africans, your Farnie, De Villiers lot. And then at the end of the or day... Or your football. Or your football. Yeah. And in the future, of course, the your league. Your rugby league. Your rugby league, yeah. your Western Reds over here. And then at the end of the day, coming over to this yeah. magnificent, magnificent location of Gloucester Park and seeing big, fit, fat Australians sitting behind horses and just belting the living daylights out of them as they scoot round this magnificent track here at Gloucester Park. And I put it to you, Roy, as I put it to all Asians at home, that these gates behind us here scream winner. Is that going too far? I've won here. Yeah? I, uh, gee, when was it? I came over here in about 68 with Paleface Adios. Uh, I drove over with pale face behind, Back. obviously, and uh, in the float. I, yeah, in a float. And I thought, just as a sort of interesting thing to do, just as we rounded the corner here, I got pale face to drag the car and the float into, into, into the through these gates here. Through these gates here, I went through with pale face leading, and uh, but it was you know because the, the oh yeah yeah because the car would have weighed a ton easy yeah. easy yeah. and with the float <clears> another say maybe quarter of a ton. quarter of a ton at least yeah. I'll speak yeah uh, dragging it through but it was perfect preparation because pale face won uh, I think why well, gee I think I'm gonna come out with about a thousand pound pounds uh, I'm talking. Yeah. pounds yeah uh, well that was Not good dollars because we pounds. changed the currency in 66 yes and you're yeah. in 68 but that's Gloucester Park, Gloucester Park. <laughs> yeah, it's an old place it's an old place but, with old traditions yeah, but the funny thing it's about still that, pound like, notes in there <laughs> The funny thing about that yeah. night was, I'll never forget it, you pulled up over there by that phone box yeah. and you said, bugger it, I'm going to fool the horse. Yeah. And you let the tyres on the on the float down. down. And That's then you right. pulled the handbrake on, on and took all the wheels off the car. That's right. <laughs> Stupid old pale face still dragging the through. Yeah. Oh, but that was wonderful funny. horse. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful horse. And I have wonderful memories of pale face here at Gloucester Park, which, as you might have mentioned in your earlier comments, does scream winner. And... Uh, 
I'm screaming now. Yes, yeah. and, and when you want to go for a tonk on the trumpet, yeah. you know, come to Gloucester come Park. Come to Gloucester Park. Yeah. Oh, memories. <laughs> Too many. Oh, the yes. memories. Let's go home and find out what time the first saw in the Yeah, year. I want to hit something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you do. <laughs> Coming up next on ABC TV is Clive Hale and his electric pants. Yes, welcome back to This Sporting Life. And now, of course, it is competition time. Last week in picture this, Roy set the following puzzle. Yes, I asked, uh, spot the odd person out from this lot. Athel Guy, Paul McCartney, Bill Wyman, Peter Frampton. And, of course, the answer was, as I think this person might have here... Where are we? Sorry, I'll just grab an envelope here. Ah, uh, we've got... Uh, D. Peter Frampton, because uh, all the others are bass players. He's yes. the only one that wasn't. And uh, Mr. D. Bloodnot. Yes. Sir Lewis Street Bondi. Uh, congratulations, D. Bloodnot. Uh, tremendous work there, and Peter Frampton, the correct answer. Yes. This week on Picture This, Roy sets the following puzzle. Yes. You want to tell me what they're going to win? I should. Yes, yes. indeed. What are they well, Roy, a cassette available at ABC Shops, oh. a hat available at ABC Shops, and of course, this magnificent Three Jokes t shirt, The Sheeds, Jeffrey French, and Boosner J Jokes t shirt. A tremendous prize for some lucky listener who can answer the following puzzle. Yes. Uh, spot the odd person out from this four. A. Adriana Exanides. B. Joe Bailey. Yes. C. Victoria Nichols. Yes. And D. Elise Platt. And where do they send their entries in Picture This? Yeah, you send your entries to uh, Picture This. This Sporting Life Care, ABC TV, GPO Box, triple nine four Sydney 2001. Roy, uh, before we go, obviously, uh, something that's bothering me slightly is the is the proliferation of headgear on AFL footballers. Now, here we have a picture, I think we'll be able to see this pretty well, oh, of yeah. big Jimmy Steins uh, with the hat on playing for the Melbourne Dees. Now, Jim's obviously worried about his, uh, his uh, life after football and what exposure to the sun might do, especially in the summer months of training. Yeah. And, uh, curiously enough, it has affected... It's a bit of a rash taking off here. We've got Malcolm Blight here in the headgear, the July long coach practising to be a goal umpire and the sooner he makes the move, the better it'll be for not only football but especially Geelong Cat supporters. Now, Roy, where do you stand on the wearing of hats on footballers? Do you feel uh, players who wear the hats are a bit slim-hipped, a bit, a, bit, a bit on the Nance side? Or do you think that given the uh, expert example set by Australian cricketers, it won't be long before footballers are all following suit? Yes, it's a reasonable question. Look, I, I think a uniform is there to make every player look the same as everybody else. And I think if you do put a hat on, when you can get excellent sunscreening equipment vis-a-vis uh, -vis creams, yes. I, I think Steins is a show pony. I think he's drawing attention to himself. I think he's big noting himself. And I don't think people like that. If I see a player with a hat playing football, I want to hit him. Hit him hard. Roy, is it fair that it become a, a, an object of a player's fury? You know, I oh, of you course. Sit him down, you turn on his yeah, head, you yeah. give him a boot where he, you know... Even your own out. team would hate you. Yes. And they do hate yes. Steins. Yes. And how about, uh, you know, the problem of the sun? You know, as you point yeah. out, you can get your sun blocks, uh, yeah. you know, plus 15. But maybe he's allergic to them or something like that. Yeah. Maybe he should go and find some other game, like lawn bowls. Well, maybe, or, yes, indeed. You know, maybe you he should do so. I mean, if the skin isn't right... <laughs>